the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is Thai Cats Today with Louis Butko. Yes, it is Thai Cats Today for a Monday, July the 25th, 2022. The Hamilton Tiger Cats at practice today for the second day in a row, day two of practice, ahead of Thursday's game hosting the Montreal Alouettes, the first of six against the uh, divisional opponents, either the Montreal Alouettes or the Toronto Argonauts. Yes, all six of their next games come against either of those two teams. I think it goes Montreal, Toronto, Toronto, Montreal, Toronto, Toronto. So a huge stretch of football games uh, for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, of course, falling to 1-5 in five after last week's loss. And uh, yeah, two games back now of the first place Toronto Argonauts who picked up a win in Saskatchewan last night. So a big week for the Tie Cats with the Owls in town and we'll get you covered all week long here on the Tie Cats Audio Network not just with this show leading up into Thursday's game but every show on the Tie Cats Audio Network uh, really focused on a huge matchup this week and while you're here on the Tie Cats Audio Network check out a brand new episode of the CFL this week. Bubba O'Neill joined with a great roundtable of guests to discuss the biggest stories coming out of week seven of the CFL season. Lots to get to coming up on today's show. As always, we'll hear from head coach and president of football operations, Orlando Steinauer. Uh, we'll hear from Tunde Adelike. We'll hear from Braylon Addison. And later on in the show, I'll go one-on-one with QB1. That's Dane Evans. A lot been going on with him uh, the last few weeks, last few months. Of course, a new father. We've mentioned that on this show. So, uh, had a chance to catch up and sit down and have a nice conversation with Dane. So we'll play that coming for you, coming up for you in just a little bit here on the show. I want to let you know about Thursday. Thursday is the new Friday. That's the promotion running at Ticads.ca and with our friends at Bench Brewing. Uh, Thursday is the new Friday. You can come out and for 33 bucks, you get a ticket. And you'll get exclusive access and an exclusive invite to a one-on-one, well, not a one-on-one, but an exclusive tasting uh, with Bench Brewing. So 33 bucks for a ticket. You get some great beer out of it, too. So go to TyCats.ca uh, for tickets. And also letting you know about Thursday, as uh, there is a special alumnus of distinction, as Marwan Hage is going to be our alumnus of distinction. So looking forward to celebrating all the great things Marwan did in a black and gold jersey on Thursday. All right, let's hear from the head coach and president of football operations. Here's Orlando Steinauer as he spoke after practice today. Just thought they were focused. I uh, thought the energy was good. Execution, it's never going to be exactly where you want it, but I thought all three phases came out ready to practice. thought the coaches did a great job of Preparing them and ready for day three. Just, that's what you lean on. You lean on your core values, your principles, what you believe in. Um, that's off the field. And then when you go on the field, it it's never it never changes. It's about execution, right? That's, that's really what it's about. So uh, off the field, feels solid. Like, yeah, it's we're hitting adversity, but it's going to be hard pressed to find division and finger pointing uh, amongst everybody. Um, you can bring anybody up here you want to. Um, but that again, that's off the field. On the field, it's about you know executing and winning football games. Period. Have you learned anything about yourself as a coach during this stretch? Uh, that's kind of a that's a big question. Um, I think I, I think I learn every day, Louis. To be honest with you, I think there's always something to be learned um, about myself. Yeah, anytime you get tested and you go through it, you know, um, I, I learn more and more that. It is about the people you surround yourself with because you're never going through it alone. Uh, you know, who it falls on, yeah, of course, but it's who you go through it with, to be honest with you. And that's, uh, uh, I think that's, that's a big thing. But as far as myself, I mean, that's, a, that's probably a 30 minute conversation uh, for me. Yeah, that's simple. Like, we're one in five. That's, that's what we are. And, uh, you know, we've been, in, we've been in, every, in every football game, and that's important because that's kind of the difference between wholesale changes and tweaks, uh, those type of things. You kind of evaluate where you are at, you know, at the time and kind of where you're at currently and, and which way are you trending. So, yeah, the first third is, you know, it's, the record is what it is. Uh, it has no bearing on the game coming up on Thursday. And that's really the focus. So, to be honest with you, the reflection is kind of over with. Uh, 
and it's it's all forward. And and like I've mentioned before, that when we go into these meeting rooms, we're not asking the players to reflect on anything behind them, right? We're, we're definitely out the windshield now and we're moving forward. Uh, we don't ignore things, we address them, but once you address them, that's it. You don't keep readdressing uh, the past over and over. You gotta move forward and you gotta be better. Yeah, so yeah, it's good to have Lamar out there. We really haven't seen him a whole bunch outside of conditioning on the side and, and, and doing some drills uh, since really about, I think the first three, four days of training camp. So. Uh, still learning him, but uh, you know he's definitely in shape from all the running. And you know, as far as expectations, when it's time for him to make a play, we expect him to make a play the same way we would anybody else. As far as what that looks like, you know, we don't have you know that game plan will unfold as it goes. Um, but when it is time for him to catch the ball, we, you know, we would like to block it up and expect him to do it. This morning was out there practicing. Do you expect him to play this week? Yeah, we'll, we'll you know I'm not trying to dodge it, but we'll see what happens. You know, obviously we've pulled him off the sixth game. We'll see if he's going to be out there or not um, when we do our final roster. And that is the head coach and president of football operations, Orlando Steinauer, as he spoke after practice, giving a little bit of an injury update. And uh, Lamar Durant, full participant. Carol Brooks, full participant. Uh, who else? Um, who do we else we got here? Yeah, there's some guys who were limited. Trey Crawford's been limited. Chris Van Zyl did not practice for the second day in a row. Lee Autry was limited. Nick Cross, Anthony Johnson uh, did not practice. Uh, of course, they are on the six-game injured list. But good news, Simone Lawrence has been activated off the six-game injured list. And you just heard there from uh, Coach. Uh, they'll wait and see whether he will be good to go for Thursday against the Alouettes. Uh, let's hear from Tunde Adelike, a chance to catch up with him after practice. Here's what he had to say about his team's performance through the first third of the season. Obviously, yeah, just being with one and five, we're not really happy with where we are right now. Uh, we clearly know where we need to fix things, it's just turnovers and creating turnovers. So the good thing about this situation is we know what to fix. We're, we're not getting blown out, but at the same time, you can't keep saying that for the whole season, you know, so... We're going to keep trying to fix this, and I believe that the guys, with the guys in the room, we can get through this. I think maybe it's just the mentality going into the second half. I think we're too, we're too set on what we did in the first half, and we're not, we're not continuing and carrying it on to the next half. And, and maybe teams are just adjusting better than us right now, but it's, it's something we can fix. We've, we've all made plays in the, second, in the fourth quarter and things like that, so it's not like we can't uh, play at the end of the game. We don't, we don't feel fatigued or anything, so I think that's just, it's just the players. We need to fix that and in-house. Uh, I'm just I, I'm just saying like we don't need to go out and get someone to, to fix this problem kind of thing you know it's an, and like you said like the amount of talent in the room it's that's probably the most frustrating thing about this situation is just our DB room is probably the best in the room and best in the league with just having the depth to have a with Brooks back having a sixth guy who could be Darby who could be whoever is probably an all-star in the league you know and then uh, linebackers and D line and then offense to our receiving core and quarterback it's uh, yeah, it's frustrating, but it's something I know that with the guys in the room, we've been to multiple great cups, we've won multiple tough games, so I know we can do it. Uh, it's just nice to have uh, just knowing what Brooks can do in this league and him being an All Star, having him back at the boundary half. It uh, he's really good at controlling the whole boundary side, you know, talking to the will, talking to Roll, getting them all right. You know, he's kind of the leader over there, so it's nice having him back. Darby played there and played almost like an All Star there too, so it's not it's not like a huge jump like oh my god we, we needed this to get back D Brooks is going to step in and he's going to play like an all-star again but I think Darby did a great job at that yeah that is Tunde Adelike as he spoke after practice today and yeah shouting out Alden Darby for everything he's done playing that uh, boundary half spot uh, but with Cariel Brooks there is a pl plethora of riches when it comes to defensive backs on this team we knew this was going to happen we talked about this going into the season, but with injuries. And even Des Lawrence, last year's Rookie of the Year for the Tiger Cats, uh, where's his spot in that secondary? So lots of options uh, for Coach Joaquin Bradley uh, and assistant uh, DB's coach. Uh, of course, also special teams coordinator Craig Butler. But we'll keep our eye on that ahead of the uh, Thursday's game when we get the depth chart in our hand. On Wednesday, we'll uh, we'll break that down for you right here on Tie Cats today. All right, one more post practice uh, piece of sound to get to. Here is Braylon Addison. Here's what he had to say after practice today. Uh, kind of the same as last week. Um, you know, we're doing some good things, doing some things that we're not proud of. Um, we just got to find a way to put it all together and uh, start building our wins. Um, the, the East, the race for the East starts now. Uh, we got 
six East games in a row. And uh, it starts this Thursday with Montreal. So um, we got to try to put it all together this Thursday and come away with a win. I think if you look at the record on paper, uh, it says one in five. But I think if you watch game tape, um, there's times and things that we do that, you know, kind of we shoot ourselves in the foot, penalties or, you know, timely turnover or, you know, timely whatever it may be. Um, I think we're – I don't want to make a moral victory, but I think we're two plays away or three plays away. If the ball bounces another way, we're five and one or four and two. So um not going to harp on it, but um, the reality is, like you said, we won in five. Um, we just got to find a way to put it all together as a collective whole. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Coach O says it all the time. Is like uh, every guy can't take his turn, meaning like, like you just said, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's – X, whoever it is, no number matters, but it's just I feel like at times everybody's taking their turn and doing what we don't want to do. And I think once we kind of put it all together and, you know, we're on the same accord for a whole four quarters, I think, you know, we'll be where we want to be. Um, I don't think the record would be one and five. I won't sit here and say we'd be six and oh, but uh, like I said, if we could just find a way to put it all together um, starting this Thursday, I think we'll be all right. Uh, I think just reiterating that we, we trust them, we believe in them, we love them, no matter, you know, what the outsiders say or what, you know, the stats may say. Um, like I said a couple of weeks ago, some of the picks that he's thrown is they bounced off somebody's hand, whether it be me or another guy, it's bounced off people's hand and fell into the defense's hand or um, some sacks we had that, you know, our own guy punched the ball out and things like that. So um, we just try to tell them to, like, keep doing you, keep being Dane Evans. Um, you know, he took us to the Great Cup in 2019, and then last year he came in and he saved us in – uh, the East Finals. So uh, we have full confidence in them. We have full trust in them. We're behind them 100%. Um, like I said, if you watch the film, uh, it's times where you see multiple guys coming up to him during the game and giving them a pat on his helmet to let him know, like, we're with him no matter what. So um, I think, like you said, he's had some things going on outside of football that, you know, may have added some extra stress or pressure as far as having a new baby and being a father. Um, but Dane's a guy, he's going to come in every day. He's going to work like he's pass for 8,000 yards and 72 touchdowns. Um, I, I don't think he's going to wither away or, or back down because it's not going so well right now. Um, so we, lo we love him and we're fully behind him. We love him and we're fully behind him. That's Braylon Addison talking about their quarterback, QB1, Dane Evans. And speaking of Dane, yesterday there was a Tiger Cats practice. Uh, I was here by myself uh, watching and uh, had a chance to uh, get a, an exclusive one-on-one -on -one with Dane Evans. And he's someone I know who's had a lot going on the last uh, couple of months uh, with the addition of uh, him and his wife, Nikki, welcoming baby Ivy uh, to the family. So lots going on with Dane. So I thought it'd be a good chance to just kind of sit down, talk, See how he's doing, and that's how we started our conversation. I just wanted to know how he was doing. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Um, glad to be back home after that trip. Just it always takes it out of you for a couple of days. Um, just it was a short week, so we didn't have to go out like early, you know, and get like adjusted. So I think a lot of the guys are messed up on the time change, but it's pretty good. Other than that, and obviously with a, a youngin at home now, like yeah. she's young, she's up. I know you got a great support system around you, but a lot going on with you right now. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, got up at like three this morning, changing diapers, and then try to get a little nap before I come back up here. But um, it's going good. It really is. Uh, she's like at the point. She's still very young, obviously, but she's at the point now where she can like, like she can actually see a little bit, you know. So she's like picking things up with her eyes and like moving around. So uh, it's been it's been cool. It's been cool. I know. I saw Nikki's uh, mom was here. Yes. I know you've got a great support system helping you out. How important has that been? It's been huge, just because you know when when it's just me and her up here i'm up here for a lot you know for like a lot of the day um so it's nice whenever her mom can come up or my mom can come up or her sisters or my sister it's just nice to have another person in the house to be able to help um kind of takes the doesn't really take the load off but takes like my mind off of like oh man nikki's just at home all day you know what i mean yeah. so it's been it's been good um it felt like thursday it felt like a bit more of a punch in the gut than the other wins is that is that fair assessment of what i what i felt anyway yeah um it was a tough one for sure um i think that was a good team first of all that's what i'm going to say bc is a good team um we had a lot of adversity before the game even started with short week all that stuff but that's just what it is you know that that's nothing to like make up for it but that's just what happened um and then you know we had every opportunity with with all that being said they're a good team we're a good team we had every opportunity 
and we still just didn't, you know, we, we missed it. We had a couple chances, didn't get it done. Um, but I guess the positive in it is, is like watching the tape and a couple of days have gone by. It's not like, it's, it's not like anything revolutionary needs to happen. We just got to play a full game, you know, like the only team really to beat us this year is ourself, right? Like if you look at every game, we've been in it and then we take ourselves out of it and we just got to figure out how to stop doing that. And then I think we'll be a pretty damn good team. You know what I mean? Well, because the talent's there. Like when you look around the like when you look around the room, I I heard Donnie say something about it after the game too, where he's like, "Hey, man, like it's here. The talent. There's no question about the talent. It's it's finishing. Yeah. How do you find that finishing punch? You just got to do it. Um, I think Coach O said it best after the game. We're a good team that's not playing good right now, um, and we got to figure out how to play good. And what better time than right now? I think we got. I don't even know either. Like six of seven games or five of six against the East. So. Um, this is a great, great portion of the season to get back right, and we're looking forward to doing that. It's uh, it's a third way through the season, you know, six of 18 games. Can you kind of look at this as a full reset almost? And, you know, records in the past, nothing you can do about the previous six games. You control your own destiny at this point. Can you look at it as a start of a new season almost? Uh, yeah, a little bit. And I think the I think the biggest thing is just how many games, like I said, we play against the East in a row. Um Obviously, every game is important, but the East is – we always say they're four-point games, you know what I mean? So yeah. two for us, two against them. Um, so that – this it's just the way it shook out this year. Um, so, yeah, this is a great chance to get back right and get it rolling. Uh, your receivers, we've talked about it all season long. Um, I asked Steve the other day about what it is about his swagger that really brings out the best because you've brought that up, his mm-hmm. swagger. But that, that room in general, what have you seen from them and how have they grown – off the field that that's helped you too yeah i think coach phillips is doing a good job with them too um he obviously coaches them right but he also lets them be them right um and that's a really fine line for a coach to walk and i think he's doing a fantastic job of it he he has all their respect but also he knows they're all individuals playing in the greatest team sport right so he doesn't coach turnowski the same way he coaches ba and he doesn't coach ba how he coaches tim it, he's one coach that coaches seven guys differently and he's doing a fantastic job and because of that it's allowing them to each be kind of their own person but also bring the next one with them you know what I mean so it's a very cohesive unit and uh they're very they, they're they're one of the units on our team that really kind of like leads the team you know what I mean yeah. um emotionally and with their play and speaking of units on the field like one of the underappreciated positions because we don't have stats for them is the offensive line yep. and it, it seems like the last two seasons there's just been trying to find that consistency on that offensive line because of injuries because yeah. of guys coming in and out not nothing to do with the personnel at all but um fontana's back there you looks like you're getting healthier how important is that consistency finding it now and yeah. and continuing to build on it it's huge because uh like you said that that is arguably the most important position on the field those five guys right there um, and when you can get a group that plays together cohesively all the time and each one of them knows what the other's going to do, that's when you can really start rolling. Um, I mean, look at all the teams that are in the win column right now and they have consistent, consistently healthy O-lines. Yeah. Um, once we can get to that point, I feel we'll be right there with them too. Uh, what's your message to the fans who are looking at this team thinking you're better than one in five, wins are going to start to come? What's your message to those guys? Keep coming to our games, and uh, don't think we don't see everything you say about us. So when we start winning games, I hope they keep the same energy that they're saying right now. So, awesome. yeah. And that is Dane Evans as their chance to catch up with him one-on-one yesterday. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> really, that was a message. Don't think that they don't read what you're saying. Um, and he hopes you keep the same energy uh, once this team figures it out and starts winning football games. Left start. Figuring out soon. They're two games back of first place. The Argos, they're one game back of a playoff spot. The Montreal Alouettes currently hold the second spot in the East Division. They are the opponents on Thursday, and we'll get you set for that game right through the week leading up to the call with RJ and Luke. We are back tomorrow. That's why it's called Tide Cats today. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, but as mentioned, back tomorrow, we will talk to you then. From all of us here at the Ticats Audio Network, I'm Louis Butko, hoping you have a great day. Ticats Today can be heard every weekday, and we would like to hear from you. 
Email us at gameday at tiecats.ca. Have a question or an opinion? We want to hear it. That's gameday at tiecats.ca. Subscribe to the Tiecats Audio Network on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.